Today's program is on English literature. We shall specifically talk about course 2 of the undergraduate program in English literature. The course is called Literatures in English and today's title is Indian Writing in English. To discuss this topic, I have with me in the studios today, Professor Sumita Roy. Dr. Sumita Roy is a professor of English at Nizam College, Usmania University. She has over 19 years of teaching experience at the postgraduate and undergraduate levels. She has received several awards and has many publications to her credit. She is frequently invited to make presentations at different national and international forums. I welcome you, Dr. Sumita. Thank you. Dr. Sumita is going to speak to us about early Indian writing in English. I also have with me in the studios Dr. Sunita Rani. Dr. Sunita Rani teaches English at the Central University, University of Hyderabad. Her PhD is in Australian Aboriginal Women's Autobiographies. Her areas of interest are Indian literatures, literatures of the marginalized women's, stu women's studies, translation and comparative literature. Uh, Dr. Sunita Rani is also one of our course writers for uh, the postgraduate program. She has taught and supervised theses in the area of Indian writing in English and she shall be speaking to us about Indian fiction in English. I now request Dr. Sunita Rani to talk to us about Indian writing in English, the prose fiction. Could you start now? Yeah. Thank you, Professor Pushpa. Uh, it has been very interesting to listen to Professor Sumita Rai talking on uh, Indian prose in English, early Indian prose in English. The minute we think of Indian writing in English, we are reminded of several terms and we are reminded of several controversies and debates and thought-provoking ideas. For instance, a concept like Indianness or Indian sensibility, Indian English, all these terms have been debated from early or from late 19th century onwards. It is very difficult to compress the history of Indian fiction in English for uh, the past 150 years or so in a half an hour's presentation. But let me try to give you a gist of Indian fiction in English over the years. The evolution, the development of Indian fiction in English, the various milestones, the various trends and developments in Indian fiction in English. If you look at late 19th century, you will see how Indian writing has been influenced by ideas from outside India the colonial period, the rising consciousness about Indian identity and the early writings, early fiction, especially the writers like Krupa Bhai Satyanadan who wrote novels like Kamala and Saguna where she tried to debate the identity question including the religious identity. Not only the colonized natives but what is it to be a colonized native Christian. This identity question is taken further in 20th century when the big three novelists, as you know them, Akinara and Raja Rao and Mulkraj Anand, started debating similar issues but in different ways, adopting different methodologies, adopting different approaches. And there were also novelists like K. S. Venkataramani, who wrote um, very, very important novels in Indian uh, fiction. You have all those titles in your uh, lessons. Let us focus on the big three. You have a lesson on R.K. Narayan's fiction, Swami and Friends. If you look at Swami and Friends, what is R.K. Narayan trying to do there? Who are his readers? He's writing in English, he's writing about childhood, and he is also referring to the issues that were bothering Indians at the time. All this is part of the nation building that was happening at that time. It was pre-independence times and people had greater issues on their mind. They were thinking about the liberation, the freedom and uh, the Indian identity in its own right, in its own sense. 
So, all these novelists did try to build a nation exploring the possibilities, concentrating on the times, but they are in, in their own ways. While R. K. Narayan tried to focus on the day to day life, everyday life and also touching even the most intricate corners of human life. Raja Rao was trying to construct an India on the indigenous models, on the indigenous roots. Whereas, Mulk Rajanand was exploring the deeper dimensions of Indian life, like the issues of caste and class. Mulk Rajanand also has a boy, also has an adult, also has an adolescent in a novel like Untouchable. But what was he trying to do with such a character? He was trying to show us the hidden corners of Indian life. He was trying to tell us that Indian fiction, Indian writing can also touch such corners which are not quite often talked about. Apart from the nation building on the basis of political issues, there should be a nation building based on the social issues as well. And this was exactly happening at the time. Several writers were doing this. This by the way reminds me of the question, what was happening in regional literatures at the time? Were there writing similar, were there similar writings in regional languages as well? Was novel so popular in regional languages as well? Professor Sumita Rai was talking about the question of language, how the question of English has been debated throughout, discussed throughout and has been experimented throughout. And if you look at regional literatures, I am sure you will read Indian writing in English from a comparative perspective. Whenever you read an Akinara and you are reminded of a regional writer, whenever you read a 19th century writer uh, in English, you are also reminded of a regional writer who was trying to write, uh, who was trying to explore his own society or her own society. And the question of language itself as uh, Professor Sumita Rai was talking about, these writers were experimenting with the use of English. Mulk Rajwanand, by the way, comes out by saying that when others have, when others experiment with English, why not be Indians? Why should we write in Queen's English? We will write in Indian English. And Akinarayan, as you know, has also experimented with language. And when you read his English, you feel that, you know, it is not the English that we get to read in the British literature or the American literature, but you feel the Indian atmosphere there, the Indian dialogue, the Indian conversation there. That is, you feel so close to the whole setting. And Raja Rao was also doing the same thing. If you read Kantapura, you will know how Raja Rao's English is rooted, is based on his own language. Not just the words, not just using the words, but also the sentence construction, sentence construction which reminds you of the author's language. This was, uh, this is about, very briefly about the big three who have influenced the Indian literary scene radically, who have consciously experimented with Indian writing in English, who have time and again said that this is my role, this is the role I am playing and this is what I want to do. After these writers come whole range of writers who starting from Anita Desai to Arundhati Roy of recent times. Again, as I said in the beginning, it is very difficult to compress all this in a mere presentation of 30 minutes, but this will give you an idea as to who are the other writers, who are the other writers, what are the kind of writings we are introduced to, we are introduced to after the big three. For instance, Anita Desai whose short story is prescribed for you. Anita Desai also tried to explore the Indian society, but again from a gender perspective. That gender perspective which is left untouched by the other writers of earlier times, especially not 19th century because 19th century Krupa Satyanathan and others had written about women's issues and women's psyche. But in 20th century, probably it was Anita Desai who started looking at the unexplored psyche of a woman. And she is in a sense, she in a sense begins the whole, uh, the whole trend in Indian writing in English where women start talking about themselves and start exploring 
the issues which were hitherto considered taboo. And Anita Desai, from Anita Desai onwards, a different trend starts with writers like Shishi Desh Pandey, Manjula Padmanabhan and Shobha Day recently. And apart from these writers who, con who concentrated, who focused on gender, you also know about writers like Salman Rushdie, Arundhati Roy, Amita Ghosh and others who have taken the novel to the international level where Indian novel is being discussed at the international level. Just think about it for a while, how Mulka Janan required a certificate kind of a thing, a writing, a write-up, a preface by a British writer, E.M. Foster, where in the beginning when he wanted to publish his novel, Untouchable. And later on, just think about the recent writing where Indian writers are recognized in their own right. And this has been the evolution, this has been the development in Indian fiction in English. Of course, some of these crucial issues do come for discussion because uh, you know, we can't discuss about Indianness in Telugu writing. We can't discuss about Indianness in Marathi writing because we know that there the language plays a very, very important role. But when it comes to the question of Indian writing in English, we always talk about Indian sensibility and Indianness as they are reflected in Indian writing in English. That is basically because though some of us consider English as one of the Indian languages, not all of us can access English. English is still a prerogative of a few elite sections, a few privileged sections. So English, though is considered one of the Indian languages, Indian writing in English is still debating the question of Indianness and what kind of English to be used, what kind of idiom is accepted. When the big three were experimenting with English, that was uh, for a different purpose. That was to emphasize that even during the colonial times, though you were using the colonizer's language, you give an Indian touch to it. The indigenous touch is not missing. But when we use English now, that is the English that we have adopted, the English that we can manipulate. It is no longer English manipulating us, mm -hmm. but we manipulating English in an Indian situation because we feel comfortable with English now. And apart from language or as part of use of language, we have also seen writers using, uh, Professor Sumita Rai was talking about orality. Writers have experimented with orality as well. Orality mm -hmm. has been used to establish Indian English. When I say Indian English, I am not saying there is only one Indian English as such, but there are several Indian Englishes. According to our purposes, we use it, we make use of it. There have been writers who have time and again used English. Just to give a major example, Rajarao's example, the, the, rhythm kind, of, uh, yes, South Indian the kind of narrative that he has used in Kantapura, which he borrows from an oral tradition of the area, mm. which he borrows the technique of Stalapurana, mm. and then he makes use of it to suit his purposes. And a similar thing has been done time and again. Again, to give an example, is Suniti Nam Joshi's mm. Feminist Fables. Yes where this is done for a, for a different purpose altogether. This is done with a gender perspective to rewrite and rewritings have been a very important part of Indian fiction in English. That is to play with language, to play with ideas and also to emphasize what you want to say, to show how original you can be borrowing from indigenous tradition by rewriting and also the term you Creating used, subvert. Yes, subvert it and then rewrite it to suit the writer's purposes. While we are talking about this, we have, we have to look at the expatriate writers as well. The diaspora writing which has really picked up now, which has become an important part of Indian fiction in English. It could be a writer like Bharti Mukherjee who was abroad, who was not in India for several years, but still has been focusing on India and has been giving us a picture of India which is really moving, either in her short stories or in her fiction. The kind of displacement, the kind of alienation, the kind of migration that Indians were subjected to. 
and we were talking the Indian writers for a period were talking about a different kind of displacement, a different kind of migration and alienation. Whereas, when we look at expatriate writers, diaspora writers, we also find this, uh, this kind of conflict between home and abroad. The identity, this kind identity conflict is different from the earlier identity conflict that was depicted by other writers. And especially in this context, in, expat in the context of expatriate writing and diaspora writing, we have to mention how writers like Salman Rushdie, Bharti Mukherjee and several others have been looking at India and what kind of picture of India that they were presenting. Is it a critical picture? Is it a sympathetic picture? Is it an effort to identify? Is it an effort to declare solidarity? Or to say that we were never given a place there, so we are out here and we now look back at that India. That is an important issue probably you may want to explore and you may want to look at. And the most important issue for me when, when I look at uh, Indian fiction in English would be the question of translation. How the trans how translated texts have been contributing to Indian fiction in English in one way or the other. Even early fiction has been translated. A text like Saraswati Vijayam from Kerala has been translated a few years ago into English. And it shows us the picture of 19th century India, 19th century Kerala, which we could not really access in 19th century, which we could not access in Malayalam, but English is thus facilitating our accessing other literatures as well. Not just confining us to writings available, writings which are originally written in English, but also other texts from other languages which we can access through English. So, Indian fiction in English can be accessed, Indian fiction in general written in different languages can be accessed now in English uh, through, uh, in, in English through translation. This accommodative nature of Indian fiction English has made us hear several voices, some through translation, some through original writings in English, but the English they are familiar with, not the English that they are expected to write. Apart when we were talking about women writers, we mentioned only the major names like Anita Desai and others, but it is not merely these voices that exist in Indian fiction in English. But there are also voices like the most rebellious voice like Kamla Das and yeah and my story and the alphabet of lust which is you know which is really radical when even when we compare it with Anita Desai and others and also voices of minority women who have been behind the veil for a long time. It could be uh, Atiyah Hussain or uh, it could be Imtiaz Dharkar or others who have been behind the veil who could not really speak. When we look at the issues, you know, you, you look at the range of issues that Indian fiction has been exploring. Some were talking about nation, some were talking about society, some were talking about gender and some were talking about the talking about gender itself was a taboo, but talking about the gender which was behind the purdah was all the more an issue of taboo. But Indian fiction in English has been successful in breaking all these barriers and making us hear certain voices. But still you may say, has English accommodated all the voices? Has English really become uh, an empowering source? Have we heard all the voices in English? No. But as far as possible, we have heard most of the voices in English and English has also been a connective language which has been connecting with several other literatures. Sunita, Thank you have spoken about uh, the modern literature in uh, Indian uh, English. Can you also just uh, briefly talk about the short story? <laughs> because yes. uh, you have spoken about translations from regional languages. Yes. So, maybe we actually have a course, have an entire course on Indian writing in English translation. Maybe you can touch upon the short story, the contribution of the Indian short story yes. in English. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pushpa. Uh, this is an interesting and important, very, very important issue in uh, Indian fiction in English. If you look, look at the fiction writers from the beginning, you see that most of the writers have also experimented with short fiction. 
uh, most of the writers they have written novels as well as short fiction probably they found short fiction much more suitable to say certain important things and they have when i said they have experimented with genre they have done swami and friends which is prescribed for you people are still debating is it a There's novel a story, or story, a collection short of short stories yeah. so short stories has been such an important genre in indian write in, in indian fiction in english and uh, the major writers writing short stories touching upon different issues which have not been touched upon in uh, their novels or continuing the same debates in their short stories and especially women writers have gone to uh, a great um, extent in experimenting with short story and since professor pushpa has asked me about the course let me also touch upon the short story which is prescribed for you uh, for the pg course uh, olga's ayoni mm -hmm. let me briefly talk about uh, olga's ayoni again though indian women writers have talked at length about uh, abuse body sexuality of women all these issues they have talked about and here is an instance of a short story which talks about abuse of a girl child sexual abuse of a girl child and the girl not wanting to have a certain organ which is responsible for her plight and let me also touch upon a writer like manjula padmanabhan who is known as a playwright but who is also known for her short story which are very very powerful which really hit at the society full of evils which uh, which are full of exploitation and writers have used short story for that purpose uh, for uh, you know exploring different issues thank you uh, sumit uh, sunit uh, rani for talking about indian fiction in english and i think you have tried as you said you know you tried to compress about 150 years yes. of <laughs> literary works into a brief uh, while but i'm sure our students have enjoyed listening to both of you uh, giving a survey of indian writing in english and this would only uh, work towards uh, enthusing them further or inspiring them to go to the literature itself and to read more about it uh, Dr. Uh, Sumita Roy, you spoke about uh, the Indian early Indian prose in English, and you touched upon the three sections that we had. You spoke about the social reformers, the early nationalists, and the spiritualists. You also spoke about uh, how we could supplement the reading material that we already have by extending their uh, thinking and to going into areas like aesthetics and uh, also philosophy and uh, the history of uh, Indian prose. Students in enjoy reading yeah, prose. I'm sure they would. You know, mm -hmm. um, they would love. I'm sure after they finish their BA and MA, they would love to read something. And, and uh, prose is possibly the easiest thing to read. Yes, perhaps that should be uh, interesting yeah. for them. And of course, uh, not to talk of uh, Indian literature in English. That is yes. the early, the recent fiction that we have. If they are, do not feel inclined to go to a novel which looks, uh, you know, a, let, a little, uh, you know, large and in terms of length and in terms of uh, it looks a little forbidding. So they may they may prefer to go to the short. short Yes. which yes. as you said not only do, do the short stories uh, right from the big three the short stories have not only taken the same themes perhaps sometimes they've taken the same theme sometimes they have the same style but compressed into a shorter length and uh, it's therefore more powerful in some respects i feel thank you both for being here today and to uh, you know for giving our students a quick overview of indian writing in english from, from right from the early uh, the beginnings of indian writing in english to the modern times thank you again